I mean, you look on match of the day every week, every weekend, it's always a main talking point. I was refereeing at Arsenal's academy, and at the end of the season, they had games at the Emirates. I feel like if they can implement it perfectly and with a degree of harmony into the game, I feel like it'll be brilliant. International FA board unanimously approving the use of VAR at its general meeting in Zurich today. So World Cup, Premier League, maybe even down the road as well. I'm on the Azen and I'm trying to find out what VAR means to fans and fellow professionals in the game. I will be exploring the ins and outs of their thoughts and feelings regarding the late situation on this whole new project of VAR that is being portrayed in English football at this moment of time. For those that don't know what VAR stands for, well, VAR stands for Video Assistant Referee, which involves a group of three people who work together to analyse and evaluate decisions made by the official referee by watching video replays of incidents and then referring back to the referee to make a final decision. What are your current feelings on referees nowadays? So I'm quite impartial on that because uh, if a decision goes my team's way, I'm going to be uh, happy. And if the, if the referee um, puts a decision against my team, I'm going to be shouting and screaming at the referee at that moment in time. How much of an impact has VAR had on the fans? So currently my team hasn't had a VAR experience, so I haven't felt it, but I know of um, certain teams where They've scored a goal and then they've gone to VAR and it's been classified as offside, so they've disallowed the goal. In your opinion, does VAR cause confusion? Yes, because I feel like many fans don't even know what it is. And on the pitch, if the referee keeps consulting VAR every 10, 15 minutes to make a decision, I feel like it will confuse the players as well. I got in touch with a friend of mine who appears to be a referee himself. And I wanted to interview him and meet out with him to talk about the progress VAR has made since the last time I saw him during a conversation we had back in February. I wanted to get his thoughts and feelings regarding the late situation on VAR. Also, I wanted to ask him a few personal and VAR related questions. How do you see VAR progressing in the future? I think it's gonna get better, I think that Decisions aren't going to take so long to be reached. I think there'll be a sort of a more overall acceptance of decisions from VAR, and I imagine as well there'll probably be a better interaction with the fans. I imagine the fans will sort of have more of a, an insight into the final decision when it's reached. Personally, when refereeing a game, does it all come natural to you, or do you feel pressured? Uh, I think it has a, it sort of depends on the game, um, yeah. where you are, obviously now we're sort of in April so it's coming towards the end of the season, um, there's more for clubs to play for, more at stake, so I think that generally this is sort of when you get to the pressure yeah. end of the season, uh, generally when you're sort of, you might be doing a, a Sunday league game, yeah. generally you're sort of there to just enjoy it yeah. and have a bit of a laugh. Uh, what would you do in different in terms of VAR and how it's set up? I think I'd bring the fans in more on the yeah. decision, especially the ones on the ground. Obviously, if you're at home watching it, you're sort of being talked through the process by the commentators. But if you're, you're stuck in the stadium, yeah. you don't really have a clue what's happening yeah, true. Um, until sort of the decision's made a minute later. Yeah. Moving on from that, personally, um, what would you say would have to be like the toughest ground that you officiated at? Uh, well, me personally, obviously, it would be quite a low level. Yeah. Um, but I had a game at, do you know, Clapson. They play Clapton. in the Essex yeah. in the league. Yeah. Um, and they have sort of four or five hundred people turn up every game. And they bring flares and they're sort of cheering and chanting the whole way through. And I think that's probably sort of quite a quite an intense place to referee just because you've yeah. sort of got so many people there watching. And it's sort of out of character for the rest of the grounds that you yeah. referee at because a lot sort of have maybe 30 odd people yeah. turn up. And this place has sort of got 400, so it's sort of a bit of a. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a contrast to where you're sort of normally refereeing at. Today I went to interview Tom Parkin, a 20 year old university student who works for UFF, a YouTube channel that has around 18,000 subscribers. My intention was to ask him a few VAR related questions. What are your current feelings on referees nowadays? 
Um, my thoughts on referees is that they're not getting better and they're not getting worse, really. Um, good stat for that is that this World Cup will be the first time in the history of World Cups that there's never been a British referee. So maybe that says something. I think it's part of the Premier League now that referees get scrutinised. What do you think about this whole project of VAR in football? So what I think about VAR is we've been waiting so long for something for this to happen. I mean, what I always think about when I'm thinking pro VR is that Lampard shot against Germany. I mean, could we have won that game? Probably not. But it would have helped to have VAR. Um, it's a strange one with VAR because it's supposed to make the ref's life easier. But what we've seen in, in Europe is VAR making the job for the referees even harder. How much of an impact has VAR had on the fans? Well, it's, quite, it's had quite a negative impact on the fans so far. I mean, it's just so much confusion around it. But in a way, I feel like the pundits, they want it to fail almost. They, but with the fans, they don't want to be waiting 30 seconds, a minute, to wait if their team has scored a goal. They want to know now. And the technology is failing the fans a little bit in that respect. They're brought in to make the game fairer. But at this point, there's just this mad confusion. People don't know what's going on. You know, there's been um, cases in the FA Cup, I think, where a team has scored and it's like, well, have they scored? I mean, I'm not, I ain't got the answers for it. So, but I'm just giving you, as a football person on the sideline, I, I wasn't comfortable with that first half. It was, it was kind of, mysterious situation at times. It has been announced that VAR will be used at this summer's World Cup in Russia. Are you happy with that decision? Uh, I'm happy that VAR will be at this year's World Cup. Um, how I see it is if there was an underdog team, uh, say they got a decision, a blatant decision, go against them, and without the use of VAR they would have gone home and been out of the World Cup. I mean imagine how heartbreaking that would be for a country that all they have to celebrate is perhaps their inclusion in the World Cup for them to be cheated of a victory or a point that would be significant to them. That'd be heartbreaking. So for that respect, I think VAR is good. Whether it'll play out that way and VAR will be able to, you know, achieve what they promise um, is another story. How do you see VAR progressing in the future? I can see VAR changing in a number of ways. Um, I think it definitely needs looking into. At the moment it's very awkward. Uh, the delay between decisions is too long for the fast paced game that is football. Um, my opinion, for it to work properly there needs to be no controversy. But the thing is, I feel like a lot of pundits, either conspiracy theory almost, that the pundits sitting on Match of the Day, Sky Sports, they don't want VAR to come in, because that's, their whole job is talking about controversial decisions. Making a bit of a mockery of our game that they're bringing it in with so many teething problems that it's almost as if they're testing it out. So I think people like Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker, have really been highlighting the anti you know, I don't think it's ready, it's rubbish, look at this mistakes. I think they've been really upping that because that's their job, you know. They get paid a lot of money to do that. Well, we've come to the end of the documentary and I would like to thank everyone who took part in the production. And personally, I've learned a lot from these interviews in relation to VAR and found out what people really think of this new technology that is being used in football in this moment of time.